uh, in this answer you mentioned the French national team twice. Today the French national team has created a record. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you have any updates to share with them? Yeah, so last night they were playing the qualification round game against uh, one small country in Europe, Gibraltar. They won uh, only 14-0. Uh, they could have scored, I think, 40 more. I saw the, and that's the difference because the level of even if you speak today with big clubs, Paris Saint Germain with Mbappe, all big stars, but they also they invest in youth production because that's the the core of their belief. Because all important cores and things you can find in your youth because that's the development process. These guys they will become, and it's a never-ending story. That's the process that it goes. If you don't organize or have that, if you don't invest yourself in that production, educating young men, then there will be no more sport. Not only speaking about football, any sport. Because all of us, we started like that. So then France is one of the best countries in, uh, in Europe, and their process starting, I remember 1996. Why I was mentioning France? Because it was my first touch with a broad experience. When I arrived in France in that big club, you know, seeing how it's functioning, I was like, wow, you know. And all these young players coming from the youth to the first squad, it was it was great. And then playing with these players together, seeing them later being developed to big stars and Premier League level. So then you realize this is something that actually it must be done and many other countries later follow, Belgium included. So that's why today we see also many of these countries on top of FIFA ranking. certain topics 
and then showing them that you are providing service for them, which means as a coach, your job is to show the players how they can win the games. And then, again, from my experience as a coach, as a player, sorry, I remember sitting in the dressing room, the coach is there and everything, then he's showing us the way how we need to play, how we need to win games. And then at one moment, when you win games, you're sitting in the dressing room, you know, the players, when the coaches are off, you know, and then the players, when they're sitting later in the bus or drinking a beer somewhere together, they're saying, oh, this guy is right, you know? So then they start believing you. And then you, see, you show them that you can be a friend, you can be their brother, you can be their uh, father, you can be their enemy if needed, because there is one, there are boundaries, and then the mutual respect that you always, first of all, as a coach, I always respect players, because I've been there. You know, and what helps me in my previous football career as a player, that sometimes I recognize many of those players in the dressing room, how they feel and why they feel like that. So it helps me to find the approach, how I want to talk to them the next day or something like that. So this, this helps me. And then when you have this kind of players, they are, they are already on a certain level. So then you have to manage them to give them service, support, to show them how they can become better because they like it, you know? The good players, they want to become better day by day. So then if you show them that you are not there to uh, oppose them or to fight them, but being part of their improvement, then they will accept you and it will be able to uh, respect that it can only elevate the level of your team and your uh, dressing room. I'll come to the next question because it's, it's what, what you just said about you know, managing star players. Now coming back to the dressing room, uh, in the halftime, a lot of coaches, you know, what to speak in the halftime. Because you see a lot of, you know, in the, in the first half you might see 10 problems. Oh, my defense was not good, my midfielder didn't play well, my, you know, my formation didn't work. So we have, a coach has 10 things on his head. He's got only a very short time period. So what do you think the coach should, you know, focus on during the halftime, you call it a pep talk, you call it a war room talk, what, what, what really, what do you think, what would be your advice to the coaches? Well, very often, uh, if you are watching uh, our games, there are blasters, very often you will see that uh, after the uh, whistle of the end of the first half, we, the coaches, the coaching staff, we sit on the bench for like 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And in these 10, 15 seconds, every one of us uh, gives you know, the opinion, hey, look, this is uh, wrong, we have to correct this, we have... And, and then, in that short uh, communication, we choose one or couple of topics that we want to pass the message. Because as a coach, you can also, and you must recognize, if you go and rumble up with so many informations uh, to the players before the game, half time, whatever, then the players can get confused. So then you can you have to pick, in our opinion, the most important topics, and then you have these 10, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, and that one or two minutes walking to the dressing room, where you actually, in your head, tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna tell them this, I'm gonna approach them, or I will now attack this player, or I'm gonna now pro uh, motivate the other one because you want to create sometimes that shock effect you want to approach on a different level and very often it's you know different it's never the same because if you as a coach keep doing the same thing that the players will not absorb in that the same way because sometimes it happens that you go gently in the dressing room say look boys look we need to correct this move do that don't do this and everything you know, sometimes there are moments you are in the dressing room, you take all the things possible around you, you break everything, everything's flying around. And so there are these moments where actually as a coach you have to recognize when and why. And then you get that reaction made in the second half, what actually can happen in many games. So now I think uh, Dinesh is playing as a striker regarding questions. So I think I will just drop down as a defensive midfielder to just to hold the, the, the proceedings. Ivan, how many number of white shirts are in your wardrobe? 
I think that now there are, for the moment, I think five or six, but there is only one which is very important. I don't know, John. Me neither. <laughs> That's the one that uh, I received uh, in the f during the first season, just before the semifinals, from uh, from you, and uh, that was a great story. That uh, I think even during the season already, that we were mentioning in one uh, interaction that if we qualify or something, that you, and then it was uh, it was very funny when it arrived because we were in the bubble, nothing could come true. So and uh, of course I still have it, like the special. So you are in a, you have been with Kerala Blasters for the past three seasons now, and you are in Kerala totally for the last two seasons in Kerala because first season only was you were the one. So we all here you say Kerala Makkal, and anything you learned apart from this in Malayalam, anything apart from Kerala Makkal, you learned anything in Malayalam in these two years in Kerala? No, not a lot. Actually, it's a it's a beautiful language. You should. Yeah, I know. But actually, you should you should call me more often to go and hang out together. You know. Ah, no, no, there, 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 you, there, you, there, you receive the next question. If you if you have given an offer to do commentary after your career, coaching career in ISL with somebody called Shaiju Damodaran, will you will you accept? Of course, with you always, but I know that always I will be, uh, you know, sitting there and uh, most probably I, I will be enjoying you doing that sitting with you together. <laughs> yeah, with pleasure. Look, in the past, in the past years I was uh, often uh, as a commentary uh, assistant in a couple of uh, finals. I remember 2019 UEFA final Chelsea Arsenal in Azerbaijan in Baku. I was uh, in a commentary assistant before the game, during the game. In 2016, UEFA final uh, Sevilla Liverpool, very often in some uh, television commentaries and games. So, it's a nice thing. So, he's already there as a pundit. You should watch out. Yeah. Yeah. 